Sometimes it burns Sometimes it hurts When you say my name But thinking of hers I don't want to know Don't want you to go And leave me behind No I don't want to see If it isn't me Who's on your mind After a bit of messing then, we got that in uh, and it couldn't have been any more perfect if I'd have tried really, it just the distance that we ended up putting that pipe out the ground um, ended up being a, a, a double socket and then a single socket 90 and 90. That's it, it went in, lovely. So that now is set for myself and Luke to do tomorrow. What I did to set myself was I uh, put that round there, that's just sat on bricks at the moment before we concrete that in. That'll have a stop end on it there now. And then we're going to put, after much discussion, uh, because of that down pot, we don't want that discharge onto our roof because we don't like the idea of that. I don't like the idea of it doing that what it is at the moment, just falling down the wall, as you can see there, look. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a um, gutter on this side. We wouldn't normally, obviously. Put a gutter on this side and discharge that into the gutter. And then this gutter will come here. We'll have a running outlet there. And then this will come into there. And likewise, we'll have a stop end over there, gutter runs across to here, drain the bend, and then run an outlet straight down to there. So that's it. I'm happier with that, that it's not discharging onto our roof. The only discharging of roofs we're going to have is that one there onto this roof. There's no way of getting around that because we can't go around the corner because then discharge onto that roof. So I'll leave that where it is, run down there. It's taking half of the loft um, area, which it is what it is. Nothing else to do about it without having like a horrible sort of swan neck and get over it. Nah, don't like that at all. The roof is coming tomorrow to finish this roof. Um, he's had to battle the weather a little bit, unfortunately. So, coming tomorrow to finish, if it stays like it is now. Craig has cracked on in here and we have got all bar the last bit of first fix doing now. We've got switches, Craig. Run switches in and what else did you say we've got to do, sorry? Wall lights. Wall lights, wall lights and, and um, switching to do. And then that is done. We've started to put our insulation in the perimeter there because when we put this floor down originally, uh, it was 2.4, 2.4 and we were short that much. Um, so that, that needs to be knocked down a little bit there. Push that down a little bit. We have started to, you can just about see it there. I'll put my 25 mil around the perimeter. That's all pinned on. And we'll continue that across this wall once this is gone on Monday. We have, uh, we got a 10 mil gap across there that I purposely left for when the doors went in. I could foam it literally full, as you can see there oozing out, against the doors. Um, so there we are, happy with that. Matthew has plastered in here. Now there's no lights, so it's a little bit dark, so you won't see the quality of it. But we already know how good match plastering is, don't we? This is all skinned. This worked an absolute treat. It was solid. We put me and Matt pulled at it today just to check and it did not come off. So that is a winner. I should use that in the future. All we've got left to do is that wall. And that's only because you want to unibond that first. But that is the only wall left. He's done all that boxing and the ceiling's done. So what we've got now is there is our waste feed, as you know. All I've got to do now is pull my um, hot and cold into here, temporary. And then we can set up that sink and those two appliances because the dishwasher's not going back in there those two appliances back in there temporary now it is um, plastered and then when we're ready to go we can take it out of there spray all of that spray all of this new kitchen once it's not through and spray it in there as well so there we are then we will finish this and then we'll get ourselves home
this one set then we've decided to uh, use the slabs that were here that were going to go to someone on an allotment but they don't want them because they're uh, they got a compo on so there we are beggars can't be choosers in my opinion but there we are not to worry so we've decided to use because we've got quite a bit of makeup on this ground now we've probably got another uh, at least six inches makeup from there to the top of the ACO so uh, we've still got the option to put at least like a maybe a 100 mil hark on top of this but we took the the compo off them and when we sat them um, face to face so that there's no wobble and then these can be um, smashed so they sit tidy and then hark it over the top but we thought it might be an idea to use them to um, uh, section off our hardcore so it doesn't spread when we're trying to whacker it. You saw us use the hand tamper. We've then mixed a dry concrete. Um, you've also seen that around this side we have done a full concrete bed round there first just to get our corner set and we've uh, flaunched it off I think is the right word. Flaunched it off. Haunches inside drains. Anyway someone will tell me in the comments. Flaunched it off uh, and then we've done it all in a stock of semi-dry mix. Our plan then is once we finish, because we, as you can hear, we're still around the corner doing those, we're going to get a, a, a wetter mix and then um, flaunch them off, bench them off, whatever you want to call it, again, just to, just to hold them and we do them a bit, bit higher up just to hold them in place better. Um, we did our, our connection that you saw me do earlier in the episode uh, when the lads were here yesterday. It's just myself and Luke here today doing these. Um, so what we're doing now, we finished that off with a corner. What we did was we um, cut this one and then we've joined this corner onto that. And then we've stuck that together with the um, resin based stick saw that I like to use. And that is all sealed in there. It's all gunked in, so I'll have to take that off and just cut the uh, excess gunk off of the inside. This um, hardcore has got to be moved. I uh, informed uh, Corby, our Australian friend yesterday, to put it here. And forgot i'm not putting it there now this was the first plan this is change of plan all we did now is going across here and up there because this is where our drain was you'll see on the screen now that where the old waste point was we've um, put a blank on it we've then taped it over and we've concreted it in that's the best way i think of doing that because it's solvent weld if it was push fit it'd be a different story but because it's solvent weld i'm not going to start moving all the pipe then what we've done is we've used a slip, slip coupler on that because we, we can't move that like I've just moved the one around the corner. So what we've come up with is I've used one of these um, socket ends that's normally on there like that for your waste pipes. I've cut that off. I've then um, set the ACO on top of that and we've drilled through the ACO and that at the same time to get that central. And then before we congregate this in, I shall gunk all that all the way around there like that and sit it on top. Now. Luke tells me if you use the concrete ones of these, this is how you do it anyway. You drill a hole on the bottom and you just make it up with concrete and that. Is that right, Luke? Yes, it's right, yeah. So it's, it's the same system, except when I did it around the corner, there's a proper fitting to go into a collar. But I haven't got that option here because that's not in the right place, i.e. it doesn't sit right where one of those is, so I can't use one. As you can see there, I've ended up off centre because this drain is set. So there we are. We're going to concrete this now and put that in. This will return around this corner. What we've done then is this gas pipe that we talked about in the uh, first or second episode. Um, what I've done is I've put a piece of uh, 40 mil um, waste pipe in that hole. You can't quite see it from this. You might be able to see it there. But what I have done is I've cut the bottom off it just to allow me to now come up here in the chase that we've made and then bend it straight into the core hole that I did. Again, earlier in the episode or last episode, I'm doing this off the cuff again because I don't quite know where I am with filming because I'm, I'm weeks behind now. I say weeks behind. I'm weeks in front of myself filming. This episode is probably, oh, blimey, two months on from when I actually did the work. Hence the lovely sunshine you can see. It's probably snowing outside when you watch this episode. So that goes all the way through to outside and it's level with the new plaster work on the, out, on the inside. We're going to feed this through now. I've put the channel in to allow us to then run the echo across the front of this and it's uninterrupted echo then rather than having to cut notches out or and that just wasn't going to work i didn't want to do that so i'll push this pipe into there now and then we can concrete this echo across the front of there and that will be wonderful so once uh, we've got our corner prepared which is what luke's doing now hopefully he won't cut himself with a new stanley blade uh, and we can uh, get this one done in this lovely sunshine again i've got to keep mentioning it because you don't get it this time of year much
so quite a considerable change from the footage you've just seen where it was nice and sunny and myself and Luke were doing the ACO drainage. Uh, we're back on site today and we are doing temporary things and the plumbers, the gas engineer, sorry, my apologies, gas engineer is here to do the boiler. I'm here with Matt. We are just getting ourselves ready to fill in the hole that's been there where the water connection was in the ground that if you've been uh, following the channel so far you would have seen I think that was in episode one maybe it's on the screen we're going to get that done we've made another uh, temporary hole through into the kitchen above our um, level of underfloor heating to make sure we can now pea gravel sand uh, DPM uh, concrete insulate ready for underfloor heating which is on Friday today is Monday so let's go and have a look <sighs> not to mention the weather are we so what we've done is we have now exposed all this where the connection was uh, in the ground we've took the connection off there and put it through this hole we've made now above our underfloor heating level it was in copper if you remember so that's now been cut off we've gone through here and underneath the sink uh, you can sort of see it now a bit of spaghetti junction um, to make again a temporary connection but it is what it is this blue pipe will be disconnected from the current sink and moved up that corner so this corner pipe will just get me round to where the new sink is going to be all we'll do now is we've uh, cleaned out we've pea gravelled we're going to sand all this now up to the underside of concrete tamp that down with a little tamper and then we're going to uh, concrete this um, and then insulate and get it all prepped what we have done I've put another spigot in there look to bring our um, bend up to above again above underfloating level or screed level so that we can put our little um, waste pipe connector in there when we come to do it which is only going to be a single 40 mil to go round to the sink so there we are then we'll get this done now and uh, start concreting and get this prepped Autumn is well and truly upon us. Horrible, horrible weather. You've just seen a little bit of gutter that we did outside that's at least got the water away from here. So it runs out and it'll drop away now into the ACO. We did put the gutter down the side as well that we talked about, um, but didn't quite get to finish it because red, the weather proper turned. So we uh, come in and I have started to do this, which is this is where we have been concreting. I've now put my um, DPM on underneath the uh, insulation, as you would have seen in previous footage from, I don't know when the episode may have been, but this uh, DPM goes underneath the insulation, as well as this is the one that's under the concrete. That's the one that's on top of the, underneath this insulation. So I've put one here. What I've done then is because it's a bit awkward, let me take this back off there because that's dry. Oops. What I've done is I've just used some uh, 25 mil to cut the circle out of and then I've stacked it and found it in and put the bricks on there to weigh it down so that at least I've gone all the way around it and where I can't get in I have filled it full of foam at the back and once the screed is done um, I can then get in and um, foam that even more because what he will do is he'll go all the way around that with the uh, the foam bit however once this comes out i will be running 25 mil which are up, up there there they are ready to go the 25 mil around the perimeter just like over there all around here up to here so i may in effect form a box because that is slightly higher um, because that is 525 mil stacked up there so i may just run um, another piece around there like that of the 20 uh, the 100 mil high to form a little box and what I can do, I can then infill that with insulation even more so, even though 125 mil is more than sufficient for the floor because 100 mil is spec. But because of the cock up, and I'm going to call it a cock up, um, or the part that overlooked with the height of the concrete slab, we are about um, 25 to 30 mil too low, hence um, putting a two extra 25 mil on top of this now to get us, so we are 45 or so flush 
with the existing floor, which is in there, if you remember, from previous episodes. So I'm gonna carry on now and put my uh, 120 mil, uh, which is uh, pre-cut, which is here somewhere. Pre-cut, ready to go. We cut, we cut this square and then cut the triangle out, knowing that it would fit back in nice and tidy without having to try and cut a new piece in. So that's what I did, so that's pre-cut. What I have done, if I can just about show you there, is I put this bit of waste pipe in there for a cable for the island. So it comes up there and it comes up over there. I've then slotted it over the top, cut out just the, the width and depth of that sort of waste pipe and pushed it over the top. Um, and again, because of the amount of insulation we're using, that's plenty of coverage over the top of that pipe. I've got to put this piece in now. I'll put this piece across there, again, cut over the top of that waste pipe and, uh, and foam any potential gaps in. And that will be that, ready to start moving all of this, have a good tidy up and getting more so towards the arrival of the underfloor heating piece. Well, a completely different day to last time you saw footage a few seconds ago. And with that, yesterday I was able to get my downpipe up there, get my downpipe in that corner, even though that one has got to come off when we're looking at render. The um, gas engineers are very kindly put me an outside tapping, albeit um, it's on a compression fit in the other side. So when I do go do my render, I can cut this pipe back, fix it back to my render and make it all nice and tiny and get all that sealed in. So that will stay like that now until the render's done. Um, blow off and drain off there and that's our gas pipe pushed into there which the gas engineer was more than happy with uh, he did just say to me that the only thing you've got to be careful of if if someone when someone does this if someone's doing it for you it's got to be fully sleeved um, from outside to inside because if there's a cavity now this is a solid nine inch so we said even though you've sleeved it you've got to make sure that's done which we have anyway um, but there's no cavity as you know it's solid nine inch from previous episodes you'll know all about this so i shan't discuss it any further uh yes so sorry so that one now discharges into that aco because if you remember from previous episodes this roof used to do, used to um, come onto this one and then run forwards but because we've swapped it around that was higher now i've had to do that hence the acos that one discharges into there now I'm not sh sure how much you're going to see, but that one now discharges in this corner. I have put the gutter on the side and that now runs parallel with the fall of the, um, the roof. So it's a little bit steeper than I would do normally, but I want it to look um, nice and tidy from next door. I didn't want it to be a different pitch to the fascia because that fascia follows the pitch of the roof. Um, I've then replaced that hopper up there, I've replaced that downpipe and I've put a shoe on it so that now goes directly into this gutter. This is the only reason that gutter's on, is to get that water away from the house up that corner because before it was just pouring down the wall, if you remember, back to the first episode when we discovered it. The old hopper wasn't even fixed to the wall and it was full to the brim with dirt. So there we are, that is 100% more efficient than it was before. I've started to clean out in here uh, with an attempt to put this 25mm now on top of here and then finish my upstand as I've already talked to you about. I've finished my uh, insulation here that we've already discussed over the top of that uh, bit of pipe I put in there, so I haven't welded into there with the cable in it. This cable is only a draw wire for now. Um, so that's ready to pull the cable, the right size, right lengths and everything, back over to here when the spark is ready. Um, you can see the uh, mass of foam there just to make sure we fill any holes, that is right to the bottom, to the uh, DPM, and then fill with foam. Um, when this comes out, I've got my um, fitting, my cap ready to go in there to seal it, so no screed gets in it. Even though it is above the screed, we don't want to risk any splashes going in it. This water pipe now is above the screed as well. So once these come out, which is in a minute, put this insulation down, put this bit of ply back on top of there, move the appliances over, and then I can continue to insulate and finish this side. So all this will be stripped out, all this plumbing, all this water, everything will be stripped out. And we can finish the last bit of cable, and then that should be good. Craig is on his way now to hopefully power up in here. And this is looking lovely. So there we are, borders on the wall. Uh, they've just took it back off. It was up and running last night. They've just put all the cleaner through the system. So we took this off, I should have showed you, I didn't catch it in time. Uh, it puts a machine onto there and runs it through 
and those out, out there that are gas engineers will know exactly what it was. It was a machine, looked like two sort of cylinders, a bit like bigger versions of that. Pumped all this chemical through and it draws all the crap out of the system. Uh, and he said it was actually relatively clean. Um, so this is all up and running, other than the testing he's got to do. He's got to flush the system out again, uh, and that's good. Our condens pipe is here. Now, he has told me this should be a specific degree, but because of the limited space we've got, I have took it on myself to say we'll put it there. Um, so it is what it is. Gas engineers have gone, they're all finished, um, a lovely job done by them, thank you very much to Matt and Glyn for that. I have now completed in here, I've added my extra piece of 25 mil over the top, I've then put my uh, upstand of um, 25 mil Kingspan, Celotex Rectisel as this one is, all the way around. Um, I've even added a piece on this wall as well despite it being internal but that was an external so why not, take it away is it. I've um, Smashed a piece of uh, 150, oh, smashed, I'm using that as a hit it hard term, uh, 150 mil piece of uh, Rectocell into that hole there to fill that and then run that piece across. That there is roughly the depth of the um, screed, which is about 49 mil if we've lasered it right. Uh, all I've done then round here is I have formed myself a box around there. Um, so that's nice and sturdy. And then he'll run his... Um, his in insulated roll that he puts around, which I'll show you uh, next episode, uh, around here, and he'll fix to that, and the screen will be poured against this, and that'll be more than sturdy enough to carry that. That there, as you know, is the feed cable for our island over to there, so when we get ready for that, we can pull a new cable through, because that's just a drag wire for now. When this kitchen comes out of, uh, sorry, when the sink comes out of the kitchen in there, which is uh, very imminent now almost, this bung will just go into there until we're ready to get this feed and take it around to the new kitchen and this, which is around that corner there. So I'm going to leave that there so I don't forget it. This will obviously have just be taken off the sink as it is now and connected back inside there so it feeds the house because that's what it's doing at the minute, it's feeding the whole house from this point. Again, it's going to have to go in temporary until we put the new kitchen in and pipe it back round and round to the new, um, the new feed or the new sink feed. So there we are, this is our cooker cable which is going to come down here and into here. But I'm not going to do that yet anyway. These will be last minute of the day when you can hear Craig is now cutting some boxes out in the utility. I'll show you in a minute. He's going to get some power on there. He's done all the secondary board under the stairs. He's going to get power on there in a minute to put the boiler, plug it actually back in while in this extension lead, which is good. And then these will go in there again over the weekend, out the way, ready for underfloor heating in here tomorrow. We are going to get our final prep work done, as I've just discussed, for the underfloor heating. Uh, and we look forward to showing you that next week. <laughs>